Hi, uh, my, my name is Tom Lonigan and I'm the Technology Coordinator for NCTE, which is the National Centre for Technology and Education. Uh, we work with uh, all primary and post-primary schools and our purpose is really to promote and support the integration of ICT into learning, into teaching and learning. And uh, my specific role is, uh, I suppose, supporting uh, technology in schools, the, the, the technology part of it. So the technology infrastructure. So, for example, I coordinate the, the broadband program for schools, uh, which is basically providing broadband to all the primary and post-primary schools around the country. And that, that includes different levels of broadband, uh, depending on what's available, et cetera, including uh, a new program, which is high-speed broadband for schools, which is 100 megs for post-primary schools. I think uh, like uh, I've been here 10 years uh, and over that time we've 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 started a broadband program which which has massively helped schools because the, like the world has changed massively in the last 10 years there is now a massive a range of a range of 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 online uh, resources out there for schools and you know how you know the, the the capability of schools to access those really depends on their broadband connection uh, so I would describe broadband itself as the single most important piece of ICT in a school because it enables so many other things to happen. It, made, it enables them to connect out there to the wider world, to do access different types of multimedia, uh, images. So like if you think of the number of companies that have started in that space in the last 10 years, Google, Twitter, Twitter, Facebook, didn't exist 10 years ago. You know, they've all come in the last six, seven, eight years. I think uh, I think uh, technology is the fact of life, uh, and I think we've all, including schools and including teachers, I, I think uh, everybody pretty well recognises that the world has changed massively in the last, you know, since broadband has arrived and since we've gone into that internet world. So I think schools, like I can see, schools are vastly different places now than they were ten years ago. They have a lot more technology than they had. They still don't have enough. I mean, they still don't do, you know, we're still not, we're, we're still only very much on the entry level in terms of where schools will go uh, over the next uh, 10 years. We see a massive res revolution, revolution over the next 10 years. But, but we have made a start and, and things are changing. So we're, we're on that change curve, but that, that curve is, is really, we're probably on this point on the curve and it's probably, you know, it'll keep changing for the next 10, 20 years. Yeah. Uh, sometimes it's not about age, right? It's it's maybe sometimes about, about attitude. So I've come across uh, teachers who are even older than me, uh, who've been using this, who who've embraced the, this technology, and schools tell me that there are some younger teachers who don't embrace it as much. I mean, they can use it. They, they certainly, we can see changes that 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 te younger teachers come into schools, and they're mu they're much uh, they're much more able, they, like they're able to use those applications, like. Uh, and they use they use them for 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 their personal life as well, social networking etc. Et Older people like me and people uh, teachers etc. Don't maybe use as much of the the newer those newer technologies outside of school. But having said that, within school, uh, yes, certainly they're they're embracing those new technologies. Yeah. Yeah. Well, well, I think. What we're what we're saying is is I, I guess you could be class you could classify it as blended learning. So uh, there are still a lot of schools out there who are who are using the textbook and using using maybe even some modern technologies like uh, interactive whiteboards in a kind of a traditional way. So that they, they've they have a new interactive whiteboard now, but they might be using it very similarly to how they've used a, a blackboard. Whereas other teachers are using it in a much more interactive way. So. I think the newer learning theories, the newer learning approaches, the new teaching approaches, uh, we can see those in, for example, inquiry-based learning in science or in project maths. It's much more, uh, you know, the, engaging the class, engaging the students in terms of problem-based learning, uh, rather than you know filling up the the empty vessels in the in the past and filling up filling them up with knowledge. It's much more now that the teacher is a guide on the side as opposed to a, a, sta a sage on the stage. And therefore, you know, it's really about constructing, constructing learning. I think, I think that those new, uh, those new theories are, are becoming much more accepted and, be and, and being brought in by new teaching methodologies as well. So things are changing, but, but then change doesn't happen overnight. Yeah. 
I was actually looking at, at uh, the NCCA website yesterday, which is the National Curriculum uh, and Assessment Agency. They set the curriculums and they, they set the assessments as well. And there have been changes, for example, in junior science now, uh, a junior, ju ju junior program, in including junior science, to, um, to uh, and there's a consultation actually at the moment with schools in terms of inquiry based, well, in, not specifically inquiry, but in terms of how science should be taught. And uh, so a lot of the, the newer theories would say, yes, we need to be uh, using those, those new, those new uh, approaches like inquiring, uh, qu observing, questioning, et cetera, et cetera, rather than the, the, the kind of the more from the book, et cetera, et cetera. I think, uh, I think science is, can be quite, I mean, you still got your science labs, your physics labs, your chemistry labs and biology labs, and those seem to be still part, very much part of the, the curriculum. But I think, uh, but some schools have been using online stuff, and and and, and I, I, like there are some amazing online simulation stuff uh, resources out there now that, that teachers can use. The great thing I think about them is how they can link into. Uh, if you've got a, a virtual learning environment in your school, you can you can link them into the context of what you're what you're learning. You can you can then have a web page or or a link to a, a simulation. You can get involved in the simulation. You can uh, play around with the with the with the the various if it, if it's variables uh, or for or in science if it's calculus if it it's graphical it's engaging it'll give you instant feedback that kind of stuff and I think you can link that back back into into your VLE. I think it's some of the simulations I've seen are absolutely amazingly educational uh, and I think there's wonderful learning to to be to be to be gained from them. Uh, I, I think they're, again, some of them, I suppose, we've been limited. Uh, some of them are downloadable, so you can actually download them to your PC, and some of them are online. The online ones, I think schools haven't really seen the benefits of them fully yet because they, they didn't have the fast broadband. But, say, uh, I, I think we're, we've got some feedback now from um, 100 meg schools who, who have fast broadband, and they are able to link in, and, and not just... They're able to link into the simulations, but they're able to do it. The whole class is able to do it. It's not just one one session, and I think that's so. That's personalized learning as well. So the fact that any, 30, 30 pupils in the same class could be interacting with the same environment, but they could, they're all doing personalized learning. They're all at different points in the simulation. There were, some of them are, are maybe at the entry level. Some of them maybe the the, the other kid, students have actually gone on it's a bit like gaming so yeah. some of them are at level one some of them are at level five and they're trying to you know get the maximum number of points so there's a lot of different technologies coming together faster broadband online uh, uh, simulations etc etc uh, and 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 those simulations use use a lot of what we've been using in gaming and uh, uh, technologies as well so I, I think they're starting to come together but i think we're really only at the beginning of this kind of learning Well, you've just made me feel very old, right? Because uh, I still email. <laughs> but uh, but someone said I'm, I remember uh, someone said recently that email is a, is an application used by old people. <laughs> you know, so 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 that must date me, right? Uh, and uh, yes, uh, I, I I think uh, uh, obviously again things have changed tremendously over the last couple of, couple couple of years. Um, so. VLEs like traditional VLEs like Moodle or Blackboard or a lot of the other VLEs out there, they have for they have communication tools built within them and there's a, and if you read the literature there's a lot of there's a lot of literature saying that yes it's it's about online collaboration, constructing learning, sharing, uh, analyzing so in that social constructivist model where you're not just doing your own learning you're actually learning with other people, and, and uh, I think. Obviously, Facebook uh, seem uh, is, is kind of the leader. It seems to be in that at the moment, and then the way people use Twitter to kind of constantly network and keep up keep up to date with what's happening. I think Twitter is a fun, amazing learning tool uh, to keep in touch and to follow, like to personalize the learning. So, I think those technologies. I mean, they've only been around a couple of years. Uh, they are still evolving, and you know we'll probably look back in ten years' time and say, "Wow, God, you're still using Twitter, or, or you're still using that aspect of Twitter, or you know, haven't you moved on to the latest thing?" Um, I think uh, as broadband speeds improve, I think we'll see a lot more video kind of come in, um, and so it'll be it'll be like the best of real-time communication. So it'll be like uh, 
having a conversation in a room one to one with all the you know the all the the, the i suppose the, uh, the the other communication elements that that you have within a, a real time communication and yet it'll be the benefit of that with being able to do that globally so you can do it with any person in the world you can do you can you can do it with more than one person uh, so and you can see how this is starting to happen with with Skype. So Skype started off as a one to one, then it became a one to to group, uh, and you know it's continuing to evolve. So I think communication. If, when when I look at it over the over the last thirty years since I've left college, you know it has it has changed massively, and well, and and seemingly the the rate of change is actually increasing, not decreasing, right? I think it will. Um, I think teachers need to network as well, right? Maybe not on the same networks as they will as students. I think students will always have their own networks, and I think students should have always their own networks. You know, it's not cool for teachers to be on the same networks as schools, I guess, or as as pupils, I guess. But I think teachers need their own networks too. And I can like there are forums. I, I I'm on Google forums with with teachers and uh, uh, who share a lot about. Uh, how to how to teach and different technologies mainly technology i suppose the ones i'm on are, are typically technology uh, forums and you can see teachers asking questions instant answers coming back people arguing about different ways of doing things uh, and kind of, you know, constructively arguing and uh, you know putting forward different points of view uh, and i think yeah that that's that's absolutely you know the kind of way we, for teachers as well as for students right